If you pull the plug on a Raspberry Pi during operation, it is well possible that it will never boot up again, because its SD card is corrupted. This is what we will change today, and I will show you a few other useful tricks you might not find right away. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. All Linux systems as well as our PCs have a simple way of avoiding this catastrophe. It is called shut down. If we invoke that command, the operating system saves all open data, finishes all write operations and safely switches off. This would not be stuff for a video. When we use our raspberries with a display and a keyboard attached, we easily can invoke sudo shutdown now, and everything is okay. In a so-called headless configuration, where we have no display or keyboard connected, this is not possible, especially if we are also not connected through SSH. In these situations, the Raspberry has no head, which can give the command for a shutdown. In the past, I used a Python script to monitor a GPIO pin and, if this pin went low, invoked a shutdown command. Recently, I discovered a much simpler method. And, as the cream on the top of the cake, this method can even restart the Raspberry after a shutdown. Let's first start with the build of a simple shutdown switch. If we look at the pin header of the Raspberry, we see that the GPIO3 pin is opposite to a ground pin. A perfect fit, because if we attach a button switch between the two pins, we can signal the RPI to shut down. Of course, we can also use different GPIOs, but GPIO3 is ideal as we will see later. I use one of those small 5mm square switches, two empty 3-pin DuPont shells, a little bit of copper wire and a short heat shrink tube to build a switch. Why 3-pin shells? Also, this becomes very clear when we finished the switch. I use solid copper wire because it is more comfortable. You could also use thin stranded wires. As a first step, we crimp the wires to the female terminals and we glue the two empty shells together using super glue. Then we solder the switch to the two wires. Maybe you first check which legs are switched and which are permanently connected. Now we have a working shutdown switch. As the last step, I add a heat shrink tube to protect the whole thing. As an additional step, I suggest adding a mark on the side of the switched pins. Now it is ready and we can put it on the pin header of the Raspberry. Only connecting the switch is not enough. We have to change the config.txt file using this command. And add the following line to this file. Then press Ctrl X and Yes and after reboot it should work. And now you also see why I used 3 pin shells. Our newly created reset switch can be mounted flush with the end of the Raspberry header. Like that it is harder to get it wrong. As competent makers, we have to do a quick check of what else can go wrong. The worst case is if we turn our button and press the switch. Then the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt rails are connected. I did not try what happens, mainly because I feared that it could harm my small baby. And I love it too much. If we mix up the ends of the header, it is less of a problem. In one case, we would shorten two GPIOs, which should do no harm. In the other case, we would ground GPIO 21, which does not hurt either. We even could change pin 3 to pin 21 in the definition and the RPI would shut down. Unfortunately, it would not boot anymore. This was trick number one. The next trick concerns installations with high memory consumptions, mainly on the Pi Zero. I learned it when I used Node-RED, InfluxDB and Grafana on a Pi Zero. After a while the device blocked and had to be rebooted. Using the reboot switch from before, by the way. The top command revealed the problem. No more swap space available. 
This means that Linux does not get enough resources and blocks. Swap space is used by the operating system if the main memory is not big enough. Then it stores less needed content to the slow SD card. Of course, this happens earlier, the smaller your RAM is. The Pi Zero only has 512 MB RAM and the operating system assigns 102 MB swap space. The Pi 3 has 1 MB RAM and the operating system assigns the same amount. For the Pi 3 this is not as critical because it needs much less of this space. But what to do? We have to extend the swap file using this command. Then we uncomment these two lines. And we have to comment this line. Again Ctrl C and Y to exit the editor. Then we have to invoke these two commands. After reboot we see that the swap file is much bigger and also after a time Raspbian will still have free swap space. The Pi Zero does not become a racing car with this change. But at least it does not block anymore and we can go on to the next trick. If you see high CPU loads from InfluxDB you can change its configuration using this command. Uncomment the line store enabled and set it to false. Now InfluxDB does no more write internal logs and the CPU load is reduced. Only if you change the displayed data in Grafana the CPU has a high load. This trick applies also to faster raspberries. Trick number 4 also has to do with headless operation and might be known to many of you. How to connect a Raspberry to a Wi-Fi network the first time without display and keyboard. If you create a new SD image and boot your Pi it cannot connect to your Wi-Fi network because it does not know the credentials and therefore you cannot connect to it to change the SSID or the password. The old hen and egg problem. Here is the trick. After writing the image to the SD card you can remove and insert it again into the reader. You will get an error message. Just ignore it. Now you see this picture. We need to add two files. One is called wpasupplicant.conf and the other ssh without an extension. wpasupplicant.conf has to contain the following lines. The first is your country and here you have to enter the Wi-Fi credentials. Save it to the SD card. The file with the name SSH can be empty. It just has to be there. Usually I create a blank text file and remove the extension. Now we can boot a Raspberry with this SD card and it will connect to Wi-Fi and enable SSH. As needed. My tip? I store a WPA supplicant .conf file on my PC which includes my credentials. Then I just have to copy it to the new SD card. Two minutes saved every time I create one. Summarized. We now have a cool shutdown button on our raspberries. And connected to GPIO3 it even can start the raspberries. We extended the swap space which helps to prevent problems especially with the Raspberry Pi Zero. We broke InfluxDB's habit of using up the whole CPU. And we know how to initialize the SD card of a headless Raspberry. Of course these optimizations are already implemented on my SD image files presented in the video about InfluxDB and Grafana. You should now see a link to it in the top right of your screen. One last thing. Of course you do not need a button to initiate the shutdown. You can do that also by another logical signal. For example if you have a UPS which provides a voltage too low signal. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.